lines and jellyfish. I use that one a lot. I do. Welcome back to Curiosity Forge. I am the curiosity in the forge. It would be weird if I wasn't. Um, so, today, what we are working on is uh, a significant amount of time ago. It's got to be at least a year and a half. Got to be. Um, I arranged uh, an exchange with a friend of mine. Um, he is an artist. Um, I believe he is like right there on full time getting into that window. Um, when he first started painting again, I shot him a message. I'm like, hey, would you like to trade a handmade Kiridashi for a painting? And uh, he went for it. And uh, it took him it's just at least a year and a half to get that done. But I think he's been working on it in bits and pieces between other projects. So we talked for a while and he decided to work with the uh, Hephaestus theme. And uh, it's finished. <clears throat> and uh, I haven't gone to pick it up yet. But what I have is this Kiridashi that I made like... A year and a half ago like I, I had this done within about five or six days <clears throat> at most of uh, the agreement to exchange and enough time has gone by that I thought he had moved on with it and just said forget it so I was gonna keep this thing because I really 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 want to and he hit me up uh, last week said hey it's done when do you want to trade so tonight's the night to go trade um, here is the Kiridashi that I made, and this is a Chungus of 01 Tool Steel, and uh, it was the last of the 01 Tool Steel that I had. Um, I used this to make his. The uh, the other half of what was left out of this went to a friend of mine who wanted to make something with fire and steel, so I walked him through making his own Kiridashi while we made this one. Um, but this has got... This corner right here, jacked up. And this corner is your primary cutting surface for most things because you kind of use it like this and sort of like a scalpel. Um, I don't know what happened because it's been so long. This may have gotten dropped, probably got dropped. I, I really don't know anymore. So I'm gonna have to go in there and I'm gonna have to redress the face of this and pull back past this tip slowly and carefully without burning it and get this cleaned and repolished and i've got to make a new sheath because this is from when i first got the kydex press and i didn't quite have the hang of making these things so uh i think this might have been the third sheath i tried to make but i i didn't leave any clearance around where the blade itself sits there's not enough clearance for these to to fit right and I ended up having to take a hair dryer to this to loosen it up enough to get this back out. Which is why there's that there. And we have... That rattly fit. So I gotta fix those things and I figured might not be a bad thing to take y'all along for the ride. Um, I will say... I'm probably going to wind up making myself another one in this design, just because I like this design. But that's neither here nor there. We are going to go in the war room and start with, uh, I want to say a 220 grip belt. Start with a 220 grip belt and work on just taking tiny, tiny bites out of this to get this uh, pulled back to where I want it. And uh, once we get this corner right, We'll go back to working our way up the grits and get this nice and clean and shiny again. I may go with the 800 grit satin finish on here just for uh, ease of operations more than anything else. We'll see. But let's go to the let's go to the shop. Let's see what we can do with this. Let's see what we can do with the sheath. All right, folks. Let's see what the 220 grit does. Yay. Safety first, respirator and face shield.
this is gonna eat up a little while. I'll be back once this part's done. We can get onto the Kydex. All right, here we go, getting the Kydex marked out. I have got a uh, seven inches measured out here. Now, what kind of depth do we need on this? Let's say we don't got to go any farther down than that there. And yeah, I use a uh, copper or silver ink on this because it shows up very well on black. This gives me two square panels with space around either side to uh, set this thing down in. And uh, this should be enough room to put my, uh, my rivets and everything in there the way I need them to and have everything work out all right, I think. All right, so the Kydex is in the uh, toaster oven at about 330 degrees for around six, seven minutes, somewhere in that window. And once I get that where I'm happy, we're going in here and we'll clamp this thing shut and let it cool off. That's the fun stuff. All right, let's go for it and see what happens. Okay, so that should have it. Well, we're going to let that set for a little while, and then I'll crack it open and see whether or not I succeeded. All right, it's been a good few minutes. I read a couple of listicles on Facebook. Let's see what came out of this. All right, so we got a nice tightly fitted sheath with space to work. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill the holes in the corners for the rivets before prying this apart because it's way easier now. There you go. All the holes are drilled and I didn't have to fight with keeping everything lined up. It's just going to line back up like this every time I put it back together. Uh, my next step is going to be taking this to the grinder 
and cleaning up the tops and knocking some of the stuff off the sides. If I get this, if I get the top now, I can open this up, get everything cleaned out, all the dust and everything that builds up, and put it back together again and have it clean. The first one I did, I uh, riveted together before I cleaned up the top, and what that left me with was a bunch of plastic dust on the inside that a year and a half later still comes out. And that's a pretty clean fit. I like how this turned out. And there you have it, that gets this top cleaned and shaped at least enough to make me happy. So my next port of call, crack this thing open, see all that uh, dust in there? If you don't open this up and clean it out, it just keeps coming out attached to whatever you jam in here for the rest of eternity. <sighs> so next step is going to be rivets. So let's do that. Alright, so one of the things I picked up when I started messing with Kydex was this uh, rivet setter. And I'm making sure the smooth part on the top is on the side that's going to be facing out when this thing is in the sheath and on the crude belt loop that I'm going to make. And I need a second to remember which way I fold these things. Okay, I was right. Now, when the first one that I made at a friend's house, I used a little uh, hand squeeze press. And uh, I really didn't like the outcome of that at all. And I'm going to put one more in a bottom corner just to make sure that this stays lined up while I press this rivet into shape. Actually, no, it wasn't, it wasn't a hand set. It was one where you tap it with a hammer and it split this side. That's what it was. If you're going to be doing these rivets and Kydex, you really want one of these uh, long arm presses. They make life a lot easier. And if I had the space for it right now, I'd have this bolted down so that it didn't tip back on me when I was using it, but I don't have that, so I'll work with what I got. But there you have it. It's riveted together. So let's check our fitment. Damn you. Nice, clean tight fit. This came out nice. So next port of call is to take care of cleaning up the rest of these edges, grind these corners back, and just do the rest of the shaping work on this.
I'll be back when that's done. It's just more standing in front of the grinder. All right, so my methodology for putting a belt loop on these things is just a simple leather strap. Chicago screwed down to this thing in a way that lets a belt pass through. It's not the most elegant solution in the world, but it's the most cost-effective one that I've found, which for where I'm at at the moment is a big deal. I don't have like 14, 15 bucks to spend on a clip you can mount on this. And uh, this works if it's done right. That's how I've been carrying mine for, well, about two years now. So I have marked with the copper Sharpie right there and right there. I need to drill a little past this and right on this one, quarter inch hole for Chicago screws to make this work. first but that's okay We've got two quarter inch holes for Chicago screws. All right, so we're test fitting everything now. And getting ready to cut the leather to length. These will go in here. Get screwed down. And then I'll have to back this out and super glue these uh, Chicago screws in place once this is done. But for now... Yeah, this thing cuts. And the reason I drilled back from that mark was to leave this much of a gap right here to fit a belt through. Like I said, this ain't perfect, but it's what I can do with what I have here. And this is the completed sheath. It fits in, this locks in nicely. It just works. And this is a million times nicer than this. No rattle, no nothing unpleasant. I'm happy with that. Let's go back to the war room. All right, so the last step with this, I'm gonna unscrew these. Put a drop of medium thickness CA in here. Provided, yes. Uh, that medium thickness CA, the reason for that is it goes in there and it gets down in the threads, but it cures slow enough that I've got time to actually screw the uh, to screw the top half of this down. Um, thin CA, it sets really fast. That's your basic standard super glue, and it sets at risk of being too fast to actually screw this together properly. The medium and the thick CAs cure much slower. And that's the last step in how I make these sheaths. And uh, 
This will carry on the right hand side in this position with this pointing up and forward. And yeah, there we have a completed sheath and a Kiridashi. Now this thing is really, really sharp. It does well. I'm not 100% satisfied with the bevel, but I can't keep grinding and grinding and grinding and grinding because I don't want to burn the temper up on this. So I kind of just kind of, kind of just kind of. English is hard, children. Um, I got to get, you know, the best I can with this. And then later, if the future owner wants to, they can sit there and work with it, sandpaper, flat glass, and push it to you know dead nuts perfect but I don't think that'll be a problem this thing is still really sharp does really good the weight's good the size is good I like everything about this I want to keep it but a deal is a deal I'm not gonna back out on it but there you have it folks um I'm gonna come back after I have made the hostage exchange for the painting and we'll uh We'll take a look at the painting, and if we're lucky, if we're lucky, I will also be able to provide a link to where he sells his prints, because um, one of his other paintings, right here underneath Superman, and... That's a painting that he did a while ago and gave me a print of, so I took the print and framed it and hung it up, because honestly, that's really, really cool. So, that's what I've got on this for now until I am home with the painting of Hephaestus swinging his hammer and being accosted by a dragon, and uh, yeah, we'll come back when all that's done. All right, folks. I have made it back from the exchange. I have successfully traded the Kiridashi for the painting. And this is the painting right here. And I have extra light on this so that you can see um, what's going on in better detail than normal down here. Um, this wound up being a far larger painting than I expected. Um, and this is Hephaestus working with his hammer and we got the artist signature right there and yeah so i did uh i did talk him into doing prints so i should in theory have a link that i can pin in the top comment for uh for his prints if you want to order one um he has done quite a bit of artwork he has a lot of stuff up um there's a lot of stuff that uh it's it's definitely interesting and I absolutely love the way he works with colors. The the balance between the different colors is just fantastic. Um and he said that uh there's a lot of products being made with those images. Shirts, mugs, phone cases, clocks, you name it. Um basically whatever they can sublimate from a plastic film onto another material, they make it. So I will share the link for that. Um I am going to be ordering a print. Um the original here is going to stay in the war room. The print is going to go in the shop. That way, if something does happen in there, I damage a print and not an original painting. Um, I said, John also, that's one of his prints right up there. And uh, I get that down. But yeah, he gave me this print uh, quite a while ago. I think because I gave him a pin that I made. So yeah, you know, something that I definitely wanted to discuss while I had your attention was, uh, you know, my process for stuff like that, because, you know, I don't have the kind of confidence needed right now to try to sell stuff, but I absolutely love trading. Um, I love trading art for art. Um, you know, if you make stuff and it's cool stuff that I find interesting and you find stuff that I make interesting, I'm way happier trying to work out a trade for those things than anything else. And uh, it's when I, uh, it had to have been a year and a half ago, I bounced the idea off him to trade a Kiridashi out for a painting back before he got really busy. And uh, 
I'm glad it worked out. Um, I'm going to figure out how I want to hang this. I'm probably going to do measurements and see if I can find a closely fitted frame to put it in. That way it's protected and I can hang it with just a single nail instead of trying to basically figure out how to hang a wood board without a, without a, you know, punching holes in the board itself or making like six holes in the wall. But yeah, I just wanted to show you all that. Um, that's what I had on my plate for this week's projects. Um, I don't have, um, I hope, I hope this weekend I'll be able to start playing around with the, uh, Chungus of Steel for the Tomahawk. Um, I just wound up having, a not quite the right environment and circumstances to get into it any sooner. Um, but that is all I have for right now. Uh, if you made it this far, thank you very much. Like I said, check that, uh, pin comment. If I can get that link to come up, I will be posting it there so you can check out more of his work. And with that, praise the forge and pass the borax. Y'all stay safe in your shops. I will see you next time.